They hate when you elevate They stacking up losses, I'm handing them out, yeah, I had to go delegate It feel like I'm floating, I'm lost in the moment, I swear I could levitate They never believed that I would really fly, I had to go demonstrate I had to set them straight What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Damien Cryer Welcome back to my channel, guys We're about to do a cooking video today Cooking oxtails in the oven with the Cryer family before we get to this video, guys, if you have not subscribed to the Cryer family, I appreciate it if you just turn that bell on. That way you are subscribed to the channel and you will also get notifications automatically every time I upload a video if you are subscribed to this channel. Also, guys, I have another channel that I do daily pranks on seven days a week called the Damien Cryer channel. I will be dropping the links in the description box down below. And also, guys, I am over on Facebook dropping videos every single day, seven days a week over on Facebook. That channel on Facebook is the same name as this channel right here, The Cryer Family. So let me show you what we got here, guys. I went ahead and cleaned the oxtails off. I let them sit in the sink, well, in this bowl for a little bit. They're all nice and rinsed off. So we're gonna be making these in the oven today. Um, this was a video that was highly requested. Now I'm getting around to doing this video because um, when it comes to cooking stuff like this, I'm kind of new at this type of cooking. Um, so we're going to be doing that today. Um, so I got this pan right here. It's a tin foil pan for the oven. I actually got it double layered in case I'm, you know, accidentally poke a hole in it or something. And I'm going to be using this bowl to mix all of my, my uh, stuff that I have that's going to be going into seasoning up the oxtail. And so we have some lemon uh, cut up right here. I have some fresh garlic, guys. This is very fresh. So I'm gonna try to cut these really, really thin so they can almost liquefy in the pan while this is in the oven. And I'm gonna show you what else that we're gonna be putting in here to help bring that flavor of these oxtails out. I'm gonna be using beef broth. Um, so we got this at Walmart. This is the great value beef broth. I've never used beef broth in any of my cooking videos before, but people have suggested in the comments that I should start using beef broth when I'm doing foods like this. We also have um, Goya beef powdered bouillon flavor. So this pack came with eight packs. We have one pack right here that's already pre-opened. And I went to an African store this morning called Wazuba and I got this pack of mix right here that also has some spices in it like garlic, onion, little stuff like that. So even though this is gonna be like the powder version of the garlic and onion, I'm still gonna add my own fresh garlic cloves to this. And we also have some jasmine rice that we're gonna be using. Yes, I know you guys are probably shocked, like what, Damien, you're eating rice, what? Yes, I am, guys. Um, this is some pre-made rice already, so this won't take long to cook at all. So um, I'm actually gonna pour the oxtail on top of this rice um when everything gets done i also have some smaller potatoes i bought last week from kroger's that i'm gonna be cleaning off putting into the oxtail but this is going to go in the oxtail when the oxtail was done because these potatoes are very small they won't take long to cook at all and to top it off we also have some uh, uh, value size of heinz homemade style beef gravy that's going to set this all off and i cannot wait i am so so excited so as you guys can see, boy is actually rocking an apron. Check it out. It says, hey, don't mess with Texas, guys. It should have said, don't mess with Damien, because I had an incident yesterday. You guys seen the video already. I had this little crazy road rage situation that jumped off. But by the grace of God, I came out okay. And you know, but that's another video, guys. That video is already uploaded. If you guys want to go see that, that's the video that was uploaded before this video right here. So anyway, guys, we finna get ready and set the camera up guys so i can um show you guys how i cut this up as fine as i can get it and then we're going to start mixing everything in our glass bowl okay guys so the first thing we're going to do we're going to go ahead and take the beef broth and we're going to pour some of the beef broth in here just enough to get it we're going to end up using this whole container of beef broth but not at this particular second. I'm gonna put most of that in there, just like this. I'm gonna set this to the side again. We will be using this whole thing for this, uh, well, maybe close to the whole thing. 
We're gonna go ahead and drop these lemons in here. This is all going inside of the beef broth. All I'm doing is just making my mix right now, guys. Okay, we're gonna use this one pack of bouillon seasoning. Uh, bouillon, it's, it's actually a bouillon mix. Just gonna pour that right in there. Now, and I'm not too familiar with what this tastes like right here. This came from the African store. I actually went all the way over there to get this stuff right here for this particular video. I've never used it before, but so I'm not gonna go too crazy using a whole lot of it because I'm not familiar with what this tastes like. So we're gonna get our scissors and open this up. And again, we're not gonna use the whole entire pack. We're gonna use, now nah, I'm gonna dip my finger in it just to taste it, just to get like a little taste. Oh yes, this is really good guys. I actually bought two packs of this right here. Just actually, we're gonna use the whole pack. I actually bought two packs of this just in case I wanted to make something else. And most importantly, in case I really, 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 really like this uh, seasoning. And so this is what it's looking like right now, guys. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and let that sit in there. Kind of swoosh it around a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take, this is the most important part to me which is the fresh garlic clove. I have not had any fresh garlic in years. I'm gonna make this stuff as thin as I can, guys. Like, I'm gonna end up zooming this part in for you guys so you guys can see just how thin I'm making these garlic, this fresh garlic. And this garlic, I heard, is really good for you. Like, if you're sick or you have like a bad cold or something, they said this garlic right here really helps um, get that out of you. I don't know what it is about the fresh garlic, but they say this right here is it. And again, this is my first time actually buying this type of garlic. I usually buy like the pack of like onion, uh, I'm sorry, garlic powder from like the Dollar Tree or something. But this time I decided to go with the fresh garlic. Instead of taking a lazy way out of it, I decided to, you know, make this, you know, make this video a lot more detailed than just throwing some garlic salt on there. By the way, guys, in this video, I will not be using any regular seasonings for the oxtail due to the fact that I am using the beef broth and all these other flavors, which is gonna actually give it a natural seasoning flavor without having to use like salt and pepper and onion powder and all this other stuff. As you guys just witnessed, some of the seasonings that just went into this uh, mix that I just made. I'm gonna show you guys exactly why I'm doing this. Now, I did watch some tutorials on how to make oxtail, but I decided to add my own little twist to this. And so I wanna show you real quick. Again, I will zoom this in early, uh, later on when I'm editing on how I cut this up the way I did. So this is the garlic, the fresh garlic. You guys see how thin it is? It's almost as thin as the knife each slice let me get a piece see how thin that is it's almost as thin as the cutting knife but it's just yeah so all we're gonna do bring this closer so you guys can see this we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump we're gonna go <laughs> jump we're gonna go ahead and just dump this garlic right into this mix right here and i believe we are through with the cutting board for right now I'm gonna set that aside. So all I'm gonna do is just mix this up really good. I wanna make sure I get every piece of garlic in there. Mix it up. And this is all I'm doing is just, I'm using all liquids to pre-season my meat this time versus just slapping inside of a, slapping a bunch of salt and pepper on it. I'm gonna do it a lot different this time. I'm going to add a little bit more to this beef broth. Even though that this is going to be in the oven, all this stuff is going to be inside the oven pan. But I want to go ahead and let some of my meat marinate inside of this um, seasoning mix that I made for the oxtail. You know, like I know everybody does their oxtails differently. You know, you got some people who's professionally able to make oxtails you know some people like me i'm you know like when it comes to like fish and stuff like that that's my profession 
that's my profession when it comes to fish. So you got some people that's real, real professional when it comes to making this type of stuff. And what I'm actually doing is I'm pressing down on these lemon slices to let some of that lemon juice actually escape out of the lemon into the mix that I'm making. This is gonna, I'm just gonna taste it real quick. This is gonna be awesome, guys. I'm gonna set that to the side. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my oxtails by little I'm just gonna just let these soak inside this mix just like that you guys see what I'm doing in case you guys don't bring it closer I'll let you guys see what I'm doing I'm gonna let this sit in here for at least 20 minutes before I actually put it in the pan and get it prepared to go in the oven I'm gonna try to get all of them in there I had actually bought two packs of octails one of them been a bigger pack one been a smaller pack so what I did last night, I went ahead and unthawed the bigger pack that I bought. Um, just in case, you know, one of my kids or something decided to pop up and visit me. Especially after they see this video right here. Especially after they see this video. I'm going to let this meat sit inside here for a little while. I didn't realize, guys, how much it took, you know, how much it takes to go into prepping oxtail. I actually watched a video on how they actually shave the meat, like shave the fat off the oxtail. It was actually pretty awesome to actually see that. So, whenever I do cook a dish like this that I never cooked before, I always try to do my research first and try to like look it up and stuff just to kind of get a feel for what I'm getting myself into. And kind of like, because when you cook foods, you have to remember that certain people that you're cooking these foods in front of are going to want to try these dishes. So this is what it looks like right here, guys. Does it not look good so far? And it's actually raw. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and transfer everything from this bowl right here over to the tin foil. That way we can get this prep for the oven. I currently have the oven set on 375 and I have a timer set for two hours. Let it cook for two hours. Uh, excuse me, after it cooks for two hours and that meat starts to tenderize on those oxtails, we're gonna go ahead and get the second step of it started, which is the second step is getting these potatoes all rinsed off, which before I turn the camera back on, obviously, I'm gonna have them all rinsed off and put these inside of the pan with the oxtail so that way that they can all cook in together because you don't wanna put the potatoes in right now too early. If you put the potatoes in too early, they're gonna pretty much turn into mashed potatoes and just dissolve. So that would not be a good oxtail mixture. Once we add the potatoes, the rice is already pre-cooked, so we're gonna go ahead and just put that in, you know, on the stove and get that all hooked up. And again, guys, I'm really excited because I've never been able to bring you guys a video like this on the Cryer family ever, where I'm actually using beef broth. I'm sorry, beef broth. I'm using actually fresh lemon cuts. I'm actually using all these different seasonings and stuff to travel like 20 minutes to 30 minutes from my home just to go to an African store to get a certain type of seasoning that I've never used and I've also never used bouillon cube in any of my foods before. So this is like a special type of uh, moment for me and I'm sure that this is a meal I'm hoping that I'm going to enjoy as well as the fact that you guys know that I'm not a big rice eater. So to help me eat that rice, I'm going to go ahead and be garnishing my rice with some of this delicious brown gravy. So we're gonna see how this all works out and I'm really hoping that everything works out good because if this dish works out good, I may end up trying to make something like this for like my family or like I might have guests come over or whatever because this actually gives me a chance to teach myself different uh, dishes and it gives me a chance to also teach you guys who watch the Cryer family a chance to learn how to cook different dishes. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and transfer we're gonna do the transfer right now. Now, even though I'm gonna be putting everything from this bowl inside here, I wanted this to sit and marinate and soak up the juices and everything before I actually transfer it over. And I'm still gonna pour everything in here, but I wanted the meat and everything just to sit inside these juices to show you guys that 
sometimes you can you can season your meat other ways without having to use like all the salt and pepper and all the crazy stuff. And so that time, this time I didn't use any of those items for this dish. This meat is actually raw, not even cooked yet. And it actually smells amazing. And I believe it's the seasonings that I used, the uh, different blends of stuff that I've used. Um, so, I may be putting the ingredients of everything that I've used in the description box in this video, guys. And if I forget to put it in there, please forgive me. But as you guys see, if you stop the video and look at the beginning of the video, I showed you like the different packs and stuff that I bought, but I still may add the stuff that I used in the description box just for you guys to be able to have that in case you decide to do this. And if you guys, someone decided to try this at home, please tag me in that video, man, please, because this right here really means something to me. It does, because I've never been able to do a video like this. And this far and detailed, it's just pretty cool. So right now, I'm gonna let you guys see what the oxtails look like. The color has actually changed because all the lemon and stuff that's set and, you know, marinated. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, because I gotta have everything in here, my fresh garlic cloves and everything. All that's very important to get all them, all them uh, items in here, to get it all ready for the oven. And once we get the broth poured over in the bowl, I'm sorry, in the tin foil pan, we will be able to go ahead and put the tin foil over to wrap the meat up and put it in the oven. Again, right now, you guys might have heard the oven beep a few minutes ago, which means it's all preheated and ready to go. And this is what it looks like right now with the marinated lemon on top of it, already marinated. That's gonna be really, really good, guys. When I get the rice and the gravy and everything over, woo, watch out. I don't know if they gonna call me Chef Four R D or Chef Four R Dak. Y'all know Dak stands for Damien Antoine Cryer, Chef Four R Dak. I don't know, we'll see. Now we're gonna go ahead now. The difference between this broth right here, the beef broth, and the beef broth that I have in this bowl is I added a whole lot to it, guys. I wanna show you one more time, everything got added to this beef broth. So this beef broth is not just plain, ordinary beef broth anymore. This beef broth right here is different than this beef broth because I added a pack of this Unga African seasoning mix to it. I also added bouillon cubes to it, guys. And I also added fresh garlic cloves to this. So this beef broth is no longer just plain beef broth anymore. This is actually good. I can stick my finger in it and taste it and it tastes amazing. Even the fact that raw meat set in there so it doesn't hurt anything. The smell is gonna be crazy throughout the house, guys. Just the smell of my home is gonna be just insane. Look at all this garlic. This is why I wanna make sure I get everything out, every piece is, I mean, every piece is extremely important. Most of the garlic is on top now of the meat, so I gotta get this down inside the juices. That way it cooks evenly with everything once it hits that oven. And this is a lot of beef broth, guys. This is why, this is the reason why I had double wrapped the pan. I mean, I had, I had put two, um, Ten foil pans with this in case I put too much beef broth in it It can actually kind of go over a little bit, but I'm glad I added a lot of beef broth The reason why is because once it goes in the oven when I add my gravy and stuff later on the rice is just, I mean, it's it's gonna be perfect. So I don't have to add anything else I'm gonna try to pick this up if I can this is pretty full to show you guys I may actually just do like an angle with the camera off the tripod And that's it guys, so the prep was really the hard part of the oxtail. So we're gonna go ahead guys, and we're gonna set this in the oven for about two hours. It is currently 1.36, and um, we'll check back in a couple hours, so I'll see you guys shortly. So now the first hour and 25 minutes has gone by that the oxtails have been sitting in the oven baking. I just took them out just for a few minutes to show you guys the progress of them. Um, and looking at them, looks like it worked out perfectly. 
I had a whole lot of the, the um, beef broth in there, but it looks like the oxtail actually absorbed most of the beef broth up, which is actually a plus because it means that my meat will not be dry. So this is what it's looking like right now, guys. Look at that. I don't want to eat the camera too close or the steam up from the, the smoke that's coming off the uh, meat, but as you guys see, they are coming along really, really well. They, oh wow, look at this. Yeah, these are not tender yet, guys, but they're starting to come, they are actually starting to come around to the tenderness part of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip these lemons over real quick. Looks like this is going to be a success and they're not done yet. Um, I still have to get my gravy put on. I still have to get my potatoes put in there. I didn't turn this one over, did I? The reason why I'm turning these over because if you see most of, well, a lot of my, see this on the edge of my fork, on the tip of my fork right here? That's a piece of the garlic. So a lot of the garlic when I put it in the oven was sitting on top of the lemons. So I went ahead and let it cook on top of the lemons. So I just turned the lemons over that had the extra garlic uh, slices sitting on top of it. So make sure that it all cooks in good. And as you guys can see, most of the juice, uh, I'm sorry, I said juice. Most of the beef broth actually has cooked right in with the meat, which is really, really a huge, huge success. So at this time, what I'm gonna go ahead and do, cause I'm gonna be getting my rice on here. I'm gonna go ahead and scoot the meat over a little bit like this for this side, because I'm gonna go ahead and add my potatoes right now. So come here, where you at? Here we go. We just, uh, the potatoes was rinsed off a little while ago. So we're gonna go ahead and start adding our potatoes to the, um, I almost said pot roast guys, the oxtails. Ah, you guys know I'm excited. I can't even talk right. So we're gonna go ahead and add some of these potatoes right along the edge of this pot. Well, the bigger ones, you have like these big, see like we got the big ones and then we got these little small ones. So we're gonna add like the big ones right along the side, like just like that. I think we got one or two more big ones. We can put right on the side. Here we go, we got two more. We're gonna add those right to the side of the dish. Oh, we actually got more that was buried. Wow, guys, these look so yummy. I'm not gonna lie, it's oxtail, man. <sighs> I was always intimidated about making dishes like this. It's like lasagna. People are like, Mr. Cryer, can you please do a video making lasagna? And I'm so scared because I know a lot goes into lasagna. Well, one person had DM me and they was like, Mr. Cryer, lasagna is not as difficult to make as you think that it is. Um, it's actually fairly easy. You got the right shells and right amount of sour cream and stuff like, I'm not sour cream, uh, shells and what do you call it? Cottage cheese. You got the right amount of shells and cottage cheese and stuff that you need. Um, he said it's, it's all about measurement right and somebody also said that there wasn't a right and wrong way to make lasagna basically you can't really mess it up the whole goal is trying to keep it together and make sure that it doesn't you know what I'm saying um, flip like you know what I'm trying to say the way that it's all squared and sectioned off, you wanna make sure that it stays like that. But he said, if it falls over, you just have like a lasagna soup. So anyway, I got the potatoes in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait until the last moment and when the rice gets done and I make my plate, I'm gonna add the gravy to the plate with the rice in it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the meat back in the oven for another hour, guys. For after another hour, we're gonna pull it out and by that time, the rice should already be done. We can make our plate, and it's gonna be on and popping, man. Again, if you guys wanna try this dish at home, please tag me in the video and let me know, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and try to mix this just a tad bit, guys. Oh my God, this is insane. Look at them tails. I got them all sectioned off. Actually, you know what I might do? I think I'm gonna go ahead and just slide this lemon over. I mean, it's already done did its part. Oh my God, look at that. Get your butt up here. Get up here. Potato trying to hide up under that tail. Get over here. We can go ahead and just mix them on up. Because when this potato softens up, it's not gonna really matter. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this on back in the oven. 
and again guys tag me in a video if you guys make this video so next time that we bring this out the oven we should be bringing this to an end the oven is still on 375 so it's coming along really well again one more hour and we're going to go ahead and pull it out okay guys i think this is the easy part right here when i was at the african store earlier finding this certain seasoning um for the dish that I'm making, which is the oxtail, I went ahead and got a bag of this Ben's Original Ready Rice by Jasmine's. So this rice is already pre-cooked, so I don't have to do a whole lot to this rice right here. As you guys know, I'm not a big rice eater, meaning I really don't know how to cook rice. So this is already pre-cooked, so I'm gonna go ahead, I've already got some water on the stove. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I guess go ahead and just start putting the rice in there. It, it comes out in like one clump. So I'm thinking I'm about to just like, oh yeah, break it up. Yeah, break it up like that. Sorry guys, I've been drinking soda. So I'm kind of burping. And my counter is very clean. So since I am holding a camera with one hand, I'm just gonna just kind of pour it out and kind of just squeeze it. Okay, this bag didn't come with a whole lot of rice. So this is like a, like a nice little helping for just one person. Um, so, oh man. I have to get over my fear of maggots, guys. That's why I never ate rice. I've asked people a long time ago, and somebody comment in the comment section down below why I don't eat rice. And somebody had got it right dead on because rice always looked like maggots to me. And maggots to me is like the most scariest thing in the world. I can't stand maggots. And that's the truth of why I didn't like rice. Rice was never nasty. I've never thought rice was nasty. It's always been really good. I just had a fear of maggots. So I'm kind of over the fear now where I don't mind eating rice. However, the difference between now and back then is even though I'm going to try to start back eating rice is I don't really have that fear anymore. And back then I used to look at the rice real close to make sure that it wasn't moving around, you know, like maggots move around. And I had to get over that fear. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of separate it. One piece kind of got in there, it was kind of chunked up. So this rice is already pre-cooked. I could have actually just microwaved this, but that wouldn't have been enough for me. I know some people put sugar on their rice. I know some people put salt and pepper. Comment down below how you eat your rice. Salt and pepper, sugar, or do you just eat it plain? So if this rice is good, I may actually start making some of those Oriental dishes where they use like a lot of rice and stuff the chopped up bourbon chicken and stuff like that. So I'm gonna let that rice go ahead and cook for a little bit, guys. Maybe like five. Well, I'm gonna wait till it comes to a boil before I take it out. But again, um, don't judge me on how I'm cooking my rice. Again, the rice I bought was already pre-cooked. And honestly, this is my first time cooking rice. So when I seen it at the store, they had bags of rice that was like the raw bags. But being that I don't know how to cook that stuff and I don't know how long to let it sit, I decided to buy something that was already pre-cooked and we're gonna give it a try. And if I like it, who knows? Maybe I'll try it again, guys. But I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. We are going to, it is right now currently, it's just after four o'clock, it's 4.07 to be exact. Uh, we're gonna come back about 5.07 p.m., which is one hour from now, and we're gonna take the meat out the oven and see what everything looks like. All right, guys, check it out. We got it done. It's all done. I have the rice also done as well. I went ahead and put some rice on a plate and warmed it up in the microwave. So we're gonna go ahead and make our little plate and stuff. Let me show you guys what this is looking like. Gonna go ahead and get this all mixed up so you guys can be able to get a good gander at that. It looks extremely good too, man. I am so happy. I did taste a piece of the meat earlier that was just sickly just falling off the bone man yes I actually did it guys my first extremely delicious tender oxtail with rice smothered this is really good guys I mean it looks really good so what I'm gonna do again uh I got the rice right here it's already done the oxtails with the potatoes the potatoes are already really soft you guys just see, I just smashed one open with my finger. Mm -mm. Get my camera too close. Get my little rice off the microwave. 
Here's my rice with a little gravy. I'm making just enough for me to do like a little taste test for you guys. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut this off so I can set my camera up so we can sit down and eat a little bit for you guys. So give me a couple seconds and I'll be right back. All right guys, so I got the apron off which means I am ready to go. This meal right here, this cooking video was one of the more longer videos it took me to do as far as like the details of everything that went into the video, the food, stuff like that. But check it out. That's what the oxtail's looking like, guys. It looks really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and say my grace real quick, guys. Thank you, Lord, for this food. Thank you for my day. Thank you for watching over me, Lord. Watching over my family, my loved ones, my friends. Lord, I can actually continue to pray for everyone. In the name of Jesus, amen. Quick prayer. Dig right in. Rice and gravy. Rice and gravy. Mmm. Mmm. One of the potatoes with the gravy. I see that smoke coming off of that. This is actually really good. I did that. I did that, man. Just check your mocktails out. Extremely tender. Extremely, extremely tender. It's not overcooked with a meat that's falling. You don't really get to enjoy it because it's like falling. The meat is really tender, it's really good. The liquid seasonings was perfect for this dish right here. It's been a while since I actually did a mukbang. As far as cooking something and eating it. I know the last few times people were commenting saying that I didn't do the taste test. But I have, oh. I have people like, when it comes to eating on camera, you have some people who don't mind it. You have some people who's just against like the smacking sounds and stuff like that. And I don't do it on purpose, but you got some people who want to see you cook the food and eat it. You have some people who want to see you cook the food, but don't want to see you eat it. But then will comment and say, why didn't you eat the food? And they'd be the same ones that says, I hate when you eat on camera, but then when you cook the food, they comment and say, why didn't you eat it? It's like, I don't, <laughs> and I thought I was just seeing stuff. So I actually screenshotted it one day. I know I'm your host, the same person is saying, I can't watch you eat in the videos all the time. But then I did a video making fish and stuff. And the person commented and said, okay, it was a good video, but why didn't you eat the food? I'm like, just the same person that commented, but that's that's all good. But anyway, mm, these are the smaller parts of the oxtail, the little pieces. This is so good, man. And I can actually taste the difference, like using a beef broth versus these are bones I'm setting to the side. Using a beef broth versus just letting my food sit and bake in water with a little salt and pepper in it. The beef broth actually really made a huge difference on this dish. It actually brought the flavor out. And if you guys go back and watch the beginning of the video, I'm sorry, you guys didn't see me use not one package or any salt or pepper. Hello? Hey, what's up, bro? I call you back. Matter of fact, call my other phone. But give me like 20 minutes. All right, bro. But you guys didn't see me use not one ounce of salt, one ounce of black pepper. Everything was already seasoned. Like the lemon I used, the African seasoning that I used, down to the beef broth. Just, just good, man. This is extremely good.
The only thing that I would change next time doing this is I would not use the, this rice that's already pre-made. I will admit I'm, I'm not a big fan of this pre-made rice that's already made. Next time I'm going to do use the rice that's, that's raw and make my own rice from scratch. Um, mm. Someone suggested that I would try using red beans. Like some people use red beans instead of rice for this dish. So that may be something I may be interested, interested in doing next time. Mm. Now I can't make any promises when I'm gonna do another oxtail cooking video, but I can promise you that another one is coming. I just can't promise you when. Doing these cooking videos, and you guys see the video may be like 25, 30, maybe even 40 minutes long. These videos actually takes hours to do these type of videos. It's a lot that goes into certain stuff when the camera's turned off. That's why when we do cooking videos, we turn it on and off. A lot of people, they'll do like a 50 minute cooking video and they'll edit the video all the way down to 10 or 15 minutes, which a lot of people enjoy those type of videos because it gets right to the point but other people enjoy the long video because you're you're talking to them, you're giving them detail by detail about what you're doing. You're also going on talking about other conversations during the video. And I don't know how true it is, but I have heard people say I have a very relaxing voice. I don't know how true it is, but some people have said it. Comment down below if you find that to be kind of true. Um, I think it, you know, I take it as a, as a compliment. Anyone who tells me that I have a relaxing voice. I've had people comment on my videos saying that they watched a video of mine just to hear my voice. And I'm like, okay. I thought they were capping at first. But then I've seen several. Yes, guys, I have a flip phone as well. I actually have two phones. You guys are probably like, he got a flip phone. My iPhone is right here. I also have a backup cell phone. Mm. So, but yeah, these are really good. I'm saying, I'm not gonna lie, the rice is just this rice is not too bad, but I can taste the difference in this rice from other rice that I've had in the past, and it doesn't taste the same. Basically, I don't really like this rice right here. Not because I don't like rice, period. It's because I don't like this rice. Maybe because there's no seasoning in the rice. I didn't put any type of flavor in it. I just added like the brown beef gravy to it. Mm -hmm. This is it. So, aside to these right here, I still got like a few oxtails left in the pan. Now, actually, it might just give me some brown rice tomorrow. Or red, no, I'm sorry, red beans tomorrow. And probably just mix them in there. Like, go to Popeyes. You guys know what I'm talking about. I may go to Popeyes drive through tomorrow. If I have a taste for oxtails and red beans tomorrow, it might give me like a little small container of their red beans and rice. Bring it home and maybe pour the rest of the oxtails on top of it. So, I may not be a bad idea. I try not to make a huge helping of food because I don't want it to go to waste. And 90% of the time, it's just me here eating the food, so. When I make food, I try not to make too much food. That's why early on in the video, I said I had bought two packs of the oxtails, but only unthawed one pack. Because it would have been a waste of making both packs and then trying to break everything down in storage containers and stuff. Mmm. This is him right here.
Mm. It's really good. Mm, mm, mm. Guys, listen. I am going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. As you see, I'm not gonna mess with that rice. It's just not for me. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this video to an end. It has been a very long day. Most of my time today has went into doing this video for you guys, man. But I really hope that you guys really enjoy this video. And for the ones who made it all the way through the whole video, guys, thank you. Oh, excuse me. Thank you if you made it this far through the video, man. I really appreciate you guys. All of you are so awesome, man. Um, appreciate all of you who always show me so much support in every video I drop, man. Whether I got a video to get 2,000 views or 2,500 views or 3,000 views, you know, you guys are always here to support me, man, and that means the world to me. And I'm just great, so grateful for all of y'all, man. But I'm going to go ahead and end this video off. Until next time, it's your boy Damian Cryer. Thanks for watching.